Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another Fate Grand Order video, because today we finally have the start of Saber Wars 2. The day so many have been waiting for is finally here, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the event. Try not to give too many spoilers about it. Um, I'm not going to show the ascensions of other characters, don't worry about that. Uh, get into Space Ishtar, which is basically trying to explain in the best way possible why everyone's saving for her because she's so stupid nuts. And talk about a whole bunch of other stuff and go over some of the cards and some other things coming with the event. But anyway, that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can leave a like, especially if you found it helpful. It always helps to leave a like. It helps the channel a whole bunch and lets me know that I'm doing correct. Uh, and if I'm doing something wrong, feel free to tell me in the comments and I will work on fixing that. Or if you're excited for Saber Wars 2 or how much you have saved up, I know a lot of people have saved up at this point, feel free to drop it down below. I will be there day one ready to summon with the rest of you. So Saber Wars 2, it starts on the 18th, but it, the maintenance starts on the 17th. So it's a little bit, it's always funny when they like, oh yeah, the event starts on the 18th. Maintenance starts on the day 17, and then it lets up at, uh, I believe, 4 hours later, maybe? I think at 1 a.m. my time, which is the 18th at that point. Um, so that's when Saber Wars 2 happens. It's the beginning of space. This story has absolutely nothing to do with the main story. In fact, it may have happened and may not have. It is much like a certain blockbuster film franchise we all know so well. Where are all the people out there who are saying, yo, Kaneku Man is out there keeping Quetz away from coming back to Samba? Meanwhile, Disney owns Star Wars and is not preventing this. <laughs> so you're full, so full of... Mm, I'll, I'll, I'll let it go. In an unexpected turn of events, you have taken to space. You panic at first, but your usual conviction that things will work out eventually kicks in, and you must hurl yourself into Final Frontier. The Shining Blue Galaxy, also known as the Servant Universe, awaits you. I'm weird not seeing it called the Servant Verse. Um, brimming with both chaos and a myriad of desires of its people, get your spacesuit on and embark on an unprecedented adventure. So they're ready for an adventure, so let's go. So event summary, get ready for the limited time event Saber Wars 2 at the beginning of space. As an interplanetary conflict unfolds, a servant universe, a galaxy populated by servants. In this event, travel between planets and gather resources to progress the story. Chase adventures across the worlds of the servant universe to reach a thrilling conclusion. So, uh, event eligibility, masters who have fulfilled the following conditions may participate. Clear final singularity, the Grand Temple of Time, Solomon. It will not be necessary to clear Pseudo Singularity 1 through 4 to, or Part 2 Prologue Prelude to further in the main quest. You just have to beat Solomon, so if you have not beat Solomon, get on that. Um, heads up, event bonus servants. The following servants will receive bonuses to the attack and bond points. Uh, that's pretty obvious. It's going to be Calamity Jane, Mysterious Heroine X, Space Ishtar, Altera, Benny Enma, Sigurd, Guy Wen, Gyagu Tajimi no Kami, what is his last name? I don't know, Emiya Alter, Billy the Kid, Jaguar Warrior, Anastasia, Mysterious Heroine X Alter, Zhang Zhu, Lancelot, Tamamo Cat, King Protea, Mysterious Heroine XX, Alteria Lily, uh, Elizabeth Baffery, Brave, Nero Claudius, Ishtar, Emia, Erish Kegel, um, Elizabeth Baffery, Regular, and Halloween, uh, Okita Soju, Okita J Soju, very specifically it is the summer version, Hijikata Toshizu, Toshizu, is that how you pronounce his name? Not 100% sure on that one. Um... So, yeah, let's get into this. So this is Spacious Tar. She's a Avenger. She's the five star. Um, this is Calamity Jane. She is an archer and she's the four star of the banner. And that's about all they got on here. So, of course, it's time to jump onto the wiki. So let's start with some of the command codes that are coming with the fence. It's Mistress of Heavens. When engraved on a buster card, increase crit damage by 25% on the engraved card. Balance scale of the universe, 10% against the threat to humanity and saber enemies when attacking using the engraved card. The Bearded Scarlet Gentleman's Command Seal inflict burn with 500 damage for 3 turns when it's engraved on the card. Next we got Binary Star Songstress, which is the craft essence. MP gain 10%, MP, gain dam MP damage is 10%, plus 3 critical stars per turn. 100% damage to equip Servant. Max limit broken 200%, drops plus 1 of the little hair. 
Uh, I forget how to pronounce it specifically, and it sounds too similar to another word, which is why I never say it. Uh, Bestia del Sol, quick and buster, crit damage 10%, and also 10% to crit and buster. 50% damage to all servants. Raid up craft essences, these are on the banner. Princess of Red Bean Past, uh, I was gonna call it Pasta, Paste. Quick 6%, healing received 10%, 40% starting NP. Um, Planet Rocket Arts 8%, NP overcharge 100%, one time. Cultural and Martial Arts simultaneously. Buster 5%, it became 3%. Not the greatest of craft essences in the world, but if you can get this one max on limit broken, it'd be pretty nice to have 50% <laughs> starting NP for that one, but otherwise not the greatest. AXP craft essences, first curry, and a mysterious substance Y. So now let us go here. Let's actually look at not the pre-release campaign, the summon campaign. There she is. So here are the two units. Let's start with Calamity Jane, and then we will end with the showstopper. Calamity Jane is an archer. Um, these are her skills. First skill, Sabotage B, reduces all enemies' attack by 10% for three turns, reduces their crit attack chance for three turns. Crit chance is 9% at level 1, and at level 10 it is 19%. Second skill is Galaxy Messenger EX, reduces all enemy NP gauge by 1, increases own attack for 3 turns. 80% chance to further increase uh, party's attack self for 3 turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 10%. Attack is 10% at level 1, and attack uh, except self is 10%, so that's to the party. And it's 20%, 20% at level 10. Third skill. Show me the way, Polar Star Rank B. Increase one ally's buff success rate for three turns. When there are 10 crit stars or more, increase their crit damage for three turns. When there are 20 crit stars or more, increase the crit star absorption for three turns. Uh, evade when there are 30 crit stars and... Well, when there are 30 crit stars or more, grant them evasion for one turn. When there are 40 or more crit stars, give them ignore invincibility. And when there are 50 crit skills, charge their NP gauge. And the NP gauge, the success rate is 20%, crit damage is 20%, absorption is 500%, and MP is 10% at level 1. And at level 10, it is 40, 40, 1500%, and 20%. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Writing A, Presence Concealment A, Independent Action A, uh, her Noble Phantasm is the Space Dead Man's Hand, I think? Yeah, Space Dead Man's Hand. Anti-unit, per hit percentage, hits five times, uh, ignores evasion for one turn, activates first, deals damage to one enemy. It's um, 12,000 at level one, it is 2,000 at level five, and the overcharge effect is reduce their defense for two turns and reduce their quick resistance for two turns. It is defense 10% and 30% at the maximum charge, and its quick resistance down is 10% at level 1 and 30% at level... Uh, not level, it's 500%. And also her specific build is 2 quicks, 2 arts, 1 buster. So yeah, Calamity Jane. I feel like not a lot of people talk about Calamity Jane. I think she has a very fun gimmick. So if you're someone who likes to play with a lot of crit stars, it's a lot of fun. So if you have a specific build that is dedicated to crit stars the problem is is that this is on a five turn cooldown um and it's not necessarily the great like for 50 crit stars just to get 20 percent mp gauge isn't the great i like the evade at 30 i think that's nice um some of the other things also the amount of buffing you're getting is like not the greatest the success rate up is also kind of niche for a lot of dudes um, this is actually a very nice skill to have because it just straight up reduces her MP gauge by one. And then it's like a little bit of a buffer. So she's a little bit of a weird buffer, especially this skill right here, which is 9% at level 1 and 19% at level 10. Um, I like the look of Calamity Jane a whole bunch. I hope to get her while getting Space Ishtar. Um, let's hope. If possible to get both, that'd be amazing. But, um, oops. Okay, whatever that was is now dealt with. Um, but yeah, Calamity Jane. I'm gonna be happy to have her. Not really a unit that you is a must own, but if you love her look and you like the way she plays, then hey, go for her during <laughs> Ishtar. I'm gonna assume plenty of people will get her, and I think there's some fun to be had with her, so don't just throw her away if you do not get. The main girl that we're going to be talking about, which is of course Space Ishtar, 
There's really not much I need to say about this, but just for anyone who does not know, let's do a quick rundown of what she does. She has one quick card, two arts cards, two buster cards. It makes a lot of sense. First skill, Devil Sugar. Uh, increase own attack for three turns. Increases party attack except for health, for herself for three turns. Grants party charm debuff immunity except self for three turns. Um, the attack increase is 10%. Level 1 in the attack except self increases 10% and then it's 20% and 30% at uh, level 10. Second skill, Venus Driver B increases own NP damage for one turn, three turns. For one time, three turns. Grant self invincibility for one attack, three turns. Select own NP command card type between quick, arts, or buster for three turns. And the NP damage up is 10% at level 1 and 20% at level 10. Third skill, Multiple start Startling EX, charges on NP gauge, 80% chance to increase on uh, quick performance, 80% um, to increase art performance, and 80% to increase buster performance. As you can see here, uh, this part where it's like this, this is probably why they would want you to run them with Calamity Jane, because the Calamity Jane would change this to 100% for all three of these elements. But the MP charge at level 1 is 30% and 50% at level 10. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C, increases on debuff resistance by 15%. Independent Action C, increases on crit damage by 6%. Goddess Essence A++, increases on damage by 270, increases on debuff resistance by 27%. Avenger EX, increases on MP generation rate when taking damage by 22%. Raises party, including sub-members, debuff resistance by 12%. Um, it's a demerit. Oblivion Correction A, increase own crit damage by 10% and self replenishment magic B charges own MP gauge by 3.5% every turn and then of course our noble phantasm is an anti-star it is anti-unit and it deals damage to all enemies not anti-star not anti-unit anti-star deals damage to all enemies increases own damage of extra attack by 100% for one turn so if they survive this and you get to hit him with an extra attack, then congratulations, you deal a buttload of damage on the extra attack. NP level, uh, NP damage at level 1 is 450%, at level 5 it is 750%. Increased to own NP damage for 3 turns is the overcharge effect, and at 100% uh, charge it's 20%, and at level, uh, it's 500% charge it is 60%. And then the buster and quick have the same except for slightly different stats. So at level 1, the damage is 300%, and it goes up to 500%, as opposed to this one, one though, that starts at 450%, and then ends at 750%. Uh, percent. Um, yeah, in increments of 100, it kind of increases, as opposed to this one's a kind of 150... No, this is not 150, because it goes 450%, 600%, 675%, 700%, 800%, 1000%, 1000%. And then 750. And this one ends at 500%. And quick, it is 600%, 800%, 900%, 950%, and 1000%. The overcharge effect does not change. Um, the number of hits also does not change. So, yeah, this unit is stupid good. There's almost absolutely no. Because being an Avenger, what that means for her is that she's able to. Um, kind of very easily um, take care of a lot of elements. There's only like really one thing that she's bad against and you won't really ever grind against that. Uh, her skills are great. Uh, I think the worst of her skills is probably level one and that's only because... No, I don't really think even level one has its uses because again, the 30% to party ain't bad and 20% to her ain't bad. And then charm debuff immunity, that would be great against um, the Raikou and Shuden fight because they have they constantly give you charm and stuff like that. So even her worst skill, I would still say, is still pretty damn good. It is better than some character's best skill. <laughs> um, and having used her in JP, I've been able to grind with her so unbelievably easy. So she has a default arts, and this default arts, when Castoria comes during the anniversary, is going to make her stupid busted. Because basically, if you have Ishtar, you're basically future proof. Because you can use her right now with Scotty, because you can go to quick. You can use her with Castoria when she comes in the, the anniversary coming up. And then in the next anniversary, because she can go buster, she can be used with Tamamo as well, the Vich. 
So she can be used with every single support. And to be honest, right now in the game, you could use her with Scotty. You could use her with Tamamo and Bride Nero and some other ones. And with Buster, you could use her with Merlin if you wanted. There's like no... This unit is so good at what she does and so stupid strong at what she does. It's kind of ridiculous. Like... Maybe it's, I don't know if I'm giving it enough justice because it's on paper, but when you actually have her in your hands, she becomes nuts. She's absolutely nuts. It's really crazy. Um, and there's a reason, besides the fact that she is also obviously a Rin, so people were going to say for Rin regardless of anything, they've also made her extremely good. So if you're a fan of Rin, congratulations, you have one of the best units in the game. If you're a fan of the meta, congratulations, this is a unit that has so far not been proven to be unmeta. She has continuously been the best and strongest Avenger out there in terms of AoE. And she continues to be so. Um, Merlin fell out of favor for a bit. Not even It's not even that he's bad, it's just that other Buster servants are better now. Other Buster supports are better than him now, and the only thing he really gives is defense, and he could actually maybe use a little bluff, according to some people. I don't think he necessarily needs it, because I think Merlin is still one of the best units in the game. But you're seeing what I'm saying here. I'm getting off track and talking about Merlin. Space Ishtar is amazing at what she does. She's absolutely a show-stopping unit. There is almost... The Except if it wasn't for the fact that Super Orion was coming near the end of the year, there is no other unit as strong as her coming. And to be fair, there's a lot of strong units coming, but not built like this. But they're strong for different reasons that don't clash with Space Ishtar. She's absolutely worth owning. 100% good. Still is good. And yeah. That's Saber Wars 2, so I wish everyone the best of luck who is going to be summoning. I'll be able to summon when the time comes. It's now just a waiting game, so we have to wait for the 18th or I guess 17th for some people, depending on time zones. But yeah, I wish you all the best of luck. I will see you guys then. Uh, thank you for watching the video all the way through. I hope you liked it. If you did, as always, you can leave a like, comment, tell me how you're feeling, and I will see you guys in the next video that we do. So you guys have a good night, have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.